Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about database management systems. Let's just get right into talking about what those actually are. Essentially, a database management system is a program that is used to create, process, and administer a database, which are, as you might be able to imagine, very important tasks when it comes to actually using a database. Now, a database management system isn't going to be something that you use in everyday life to access a database, to work with a database, all that kind of stuff, specifically because these programs have quite a lot of power when it comes to actually making changes in a database and using them just willy-nilly can be pretty dangerous. You can lose data that way. You can unintentionally modify data in this way, all that kind of stuff. So this is more just used in the creation and maintenance of a database. We'll talk later on database applications, which are used more in the everyday uh, usage of a database. That's the kind of thing that more people would be using in order to actually interface with a database. Database management systems include Microsoft Access, which we'll be learning very soon. Uh, there's also Microsoft SQL Server. This SQL thing is called SQL. Um, IBM DB2, Oracle Database, and MySQL, which is an open source program. Now, Microsoft SQL Server and MySQL are both more in the realm of programming language. Typically, you would be, as I, maybe not necessarily you, but someone using either of those SQLs will be um, building applications that use SQL in order to interface with a database. So they'll be um, actually using SQL as the sort of back end piece that interfaces with the database but when you're actually working with a database it's not the most likely that you're going to be using sql like i said uh, with a database management system it is very easy to completely destroy everything if you type and, and that is actually um doubly so for SQL, because if you type something in wrong, you could lose your entire database or you could corrupt everything and lose all of that really, really important data that could have led to very good information, very valuable information. So that's the kind of thing where someone will build an application that uses SQL in order to interface with the database. They will test it on a fake database, hopefully, They'll be testing it on a fake database and not testing it on a real one. And then once they are relatively certain that everything is good to go, they would start using it to interface with an actual database. So SQL is really good for building database applications. Again, we're talking about the data applications next video. This video is more about database management systems. What's very important to note is that a database management system is different from an actual database. A database is a collection of tables, relationships, and metadata. Of course, in the case of a rela relational database, it is a collection of tables, relationships, and metadata. A DBMS, a database management system, is software to create, process, and administer that database. So a database is the thing that you're working on and the DBMS is the tool that you're using to work on it. You can think of this as being analogous to, you know, if you're, if the database is analogous to a car, then the um, DBMS would be the tools that you're using to maybe do repairs to that car. So if you're changing your oil, it might be the jack and the wrench and all that other stuff. In a similar vein, uh, Microsoft Access is the DBMS. It is the program that you're using to work with a database. 
the actual database is the file that you're saving in Microsoft Access. So in MyLabIT, you know, you might get some databases that you're working with. Those are the actual, you know, database. Microsoft Access is the DBMS. It, the program itself is not the database. It is just opening the database for you to work with. So of course, with database creation, uh, there's a few different tasks that are involved in that. And, you know, we're talking about a relational database right here. So when you're creating a relational database, you need to create the tables inside of that database. You also need to define the relationships between the tables and create the metadata for that table. That all is contained within the processes of creating a database. So in the previous video, you saw some screenshots of the actual tables in Microsoft Access, but you also saw screenshots of the metadata in Microsoft Access. Uh, there's also a little bit of uh, showing off the relationship between tables in the metadata when they're talking about how the uh, student number field is a key for the student table uh, that is related to the relationships between the tables. So all of that can be done in Microsoft Access. This also includes modifying a table specifically by adding columns and appropriate metadata to that table or deleting columns. So we're kind of lumping that into the functionality of creating a database because we are manipulating the actual data and relationships and metadata that are in the database using our DBMS. So that, that all would be lumped into this general idea of creating a database by creating tables, defining relationships, and creating metadata. Now the next uh, function is processing a database. A database management system must be able to read, insert, modify, or delete data. And a lot of the time this will come in the form of adding new rows into a table or modifying entries within rows in the table or getting rid of those rows. Uh, the processing a database does not include adding new columns into tables or getting rid of columns from tables or anything like that. Like we said, that's more in the creating a database realm of things. Uh, when we're processing a database, we're talking about working with the actual rows. We're, we're talking about, let's say if we're looking at a uh, the data from the student table in the example we've been working with, this would be the idea of reading information about a student, reading their grades, uh, looking at their progress, all that kind of stuff. Inserting would be inserting a new student. Let's say a student added the class, uh, processing the database would in this case would be inserting that new row into the database and filling out uh, any initial information that needs to be given, like their name and their student ID number. Modifying, let's say a assignment was misgraded or a assignment was initially given zero because it was missing, but then the professor later found that assignment and realized, oh, this was my own mistake. Uh, in that case, they would modify the database so that that grade is no longer zero, but whatever the actual assignment was scored or something like that. And then deleting data might be if a student drops the class, uh, then that would be just getting rid of that entire row. Now, typically, this is going to be done through the use of SQL either MySQL or the Microsoft version of SQL. This would probably be issued behind the scenes by programs that happen to be processing forms, uh, you know, processing information that's coming into them. And then they'll take that data, they'll assemble it into a SQL command and send that out. And the um, database management system will take that SQL command and actually implement it. They will do the reading or inserting or modifying or deleting. 
Now this is an example of a SQL commit and you do not need to know what this means. You don't need to know this at all, I promise. Uh, this is just for explanation of what SQL actually looks like. Uh, this is going to be fired off from typically a database application. Uh, when they are given the request to, it looks like, uh, insert a new student into the class with the student number 1000, the name Benjamin Franklin, and grades 90, 95, and 100% on their homework one, homework two, and midterm. So this would be actually adding a new row, adding a new student into the class and assigning those grades, initial grades to the student. So this would likely be the result of someone working on a database application, actually saying, hey, a student just got added in, uh, put that student into your class with these grades. And what would happen here is this uh, SQL command would get sent to the uh, database management system. The database management system would receive it and interpret that and then add that student with that information into the database. And then the last uh, piece of functionality for a database management system is to actually administer the database. And data, uh, database administration is going to include uh, setting up a security system. So in a setting where you have, let's say, you know, you're working in a business and there's a lot of people working together and some of those people need access to a database. You're going to set up a security system where those people are going to get accounts in order to access the database. And uh, those accounts will have passwords for security reasons, of course. Uh, they'll be given permissions. So they might only be able to access certain pieces of the database. Maybe the there's a whole database of customer information. Uh, marketing people might get more of the information about the customer themselves. Uh, inventory people might get more of the information on the actual purchases and how, you know, use that information regarding stocking and, uh, you know, making sure there's enough of certain items on the shelves for customers to buy, all that kind of stuff. And there's limits, how much information you're actually allowed to change at once, because if someone's trying to change a huge amount of information, it could either be an accident or malicious. So you want to limit what they're able to do all at once. So a database administration, a database management system will set up that kind of security to make sure that the right people are accessing the right data at the and modifying or reading or whatever at the right amount. There's not too much access. There's not access of things that people shouldn't get, all that kind of stuff. Also, backing up data is really, really important because if you lose data from a database, that's, well, at best, it's going to be horrific. Um, at worst, catastrophic. You don't want to lose the data that's in a database because, well, if you're storing it, it's useful for something, right? You're going to be able to get information out of there that will be beneficial for your business. So it's so important to have backups of a database. So that is the other aspect of database administration is backing up that data. All right, well, that's a very brief overview of uh, database management systems. Thank you all very much for watching. We're going to get into database applications in the next video.